C Sharp and SQL are often used together. But if you're using Dapper to insert records into SQL, how do you get back the ID of the newly created record? In this video, I'm going to show you how to access that ID, how to return it from SQL, how to create an output parameter, and how to capture return values as well. We're going to do all of that in 10 minutes or less. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology. But sometimes you just need a quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. And by the way, if you want the code, there's a link down in the description to get the code. It'll email it to you. Okay, so I've got a couple things set up here so that you can recreate this on your own and try it out yourself. So first I have a SQL Server database project called PeopleDB. And here I've created a little structure with a table called people, which is pretty simple, as an ID and then a first name. That's it. That's all there is just to give us something to work with. And then, oh, by the way, that ID, notice that it is an identity, which means that it will start at value of one and count up every time. So when you insert a new record, you don't insert a value in the ID column. It automatically gets generated because of this keyword identity, which is going to start at the value of one and increment by one in this integer column. Now we have the store procedure, which is where all of the work gets done. We'll see that in just a minute. But first I do have this published profile here that I use, but this isn't going to work for you because your local DB may be different than mine is. This is where you create your own. So you would right click on the project and say publish. And then you'd say edit under the test database connection. And you go to browse, find a local database uh, of your choosing. For example, for me, I use local DB, which I select local DB. I hit OK and then put a new database name in here. And then I say save profile as and I save it right in my project. That way I can double click on the publish profile next time and just say publish. And that fills all the stuff in for me. So I filled in the name of people DB for my database. Go over to SQL Server Object Explorer. And in databases, you'll see I have a people DB inside there. I have one table called people. And if we go to view data, we'll see I actually have a couple records in here, Tim and Sue, of course. So we already have a couple just so we, you know, I can try it out, make sure it worked. So that's our SQL. So you can just take this project and publish it yourself. I won't include the publish XML, so I don't confuse you. You have to create that on your own in order to publish it to your own SQL Server. Um, local DB is free. It comes with um, with Visual Studio. It's just a file based uh, SQL Server equivalent. It's essentially SQL Server Express or something similar. So, with that, we have our database, and I have a store procedure. So let's look at the store procedure. So. The basics here are pretty simple. We pass in the first name. Let's ignore ID for a minute. Pass in the first name. It's an NVAR char. And we insert into people, first name, and the value of at first name. So that's a pretty standard insert statement. However, this is where things get a little tricky. I have this other variable called ID, which is marked as an output. Now there's outputs, there's inputs. These are This is an input. And they can also have variables that are both input and output. But for me, I just chose to make ID an output, which means that I am going to set the ID to a value. Now, in this case, I set it to scope identity. What that means is the last identity that was created in this scope, which because we use a store procedure, the scope is the transaction, which is just the store procedure, which means that this identity is what's going to pick up. That can be important because if you use the wrong one, sometimes you can pick up identity that was created by somebody else's insert. So you'll make sure that you're inside a scope. Um, but that gets the last identity that was um, inserted. And it's a numeric value. So we're going to grab that into this variable, which is the output variable. We're also going to return a value. This is sometimes something people do, uh, they may return a one to say, hey, it was successful, or they might return the number of records that were affected, or they might return 
um, some kind of ID code to indicate some piece of information. I typically do not use output or I'm sorry, return values that often, um, but you can. You could also, if you wanted to, and I, I'm not a real big fan of this either, but you could return that identity instead. I prefer to put into a variable so you know very clearly this is the ID and not just a, uh, a status code. Because what if your status code is one and you think that it is your ID? Well, that would be in a valid ID. It's the first one, but it's a valid ID, right? So that could cause a problem. So I prefer to have an output variable as opposed to the return value, but we're gonna see both working here. Now, note that ID is not going to be one because we've already had one and two in the database. So the next one will be three at least, uh, maybe more. We don't need to worry about what the number is as far as is it next to the previous one. We don't care about that. We just care, is it unique? So with all that out of the way, let's look at our code. Now I'm using Dapper. And if we go to our dependencies, manage to get packages, we'll see I have installed Dapper, the latest version, and also Microsoft.data.sql client. There's also just, you know, a SQL, I'm sorry, a system.data.sql client. That is the older version. This is the newer version called Microsoft. They had to change the name because they didn't want to step on toes of applications that are currently using system.data.sql client. So therefore they created this new package called Microsoft.data.sql client. Okay. So with those, we now have our using directives up top and I ask for the first name. Now, this is a console application. And so because it's a console application, I didn't worry about making it complex. And so I didn't wire up app settings. So I just grabbed the connection string. So this connection string will be different for you. Again, you have to change this line to match your connection string. But typically you do not put that in source code. You put it in secrets.json and then you pull it in. But in our quick example, this works. And because it's using integrated security, it wouldn't technically be a security problem. It's just not a great practice. So it's, again, it's just for demo. But if you go to SQL Server Object Explorer, if you select the database you want to connect to, and then go over to your properties window. And in here, you'll see connection string. If you were to say control A in that connection string value and copy, that's this value right here. So you can get your connection string, whatever database you want, just to come over here and, and selecting it and saying, hey, what's the connection string on the properties? Okay, this is where the magic happens for our connection backwards with data. And that's these dynamic parameters. Let's actually put a, put a line break there. Okay. So dynamic parameters are something we use with Dapper to allow for two directional data. So notice here, we let's look at the simple one first, first name, add first name and the value. That's pretty simple. Don't forget the at symbol. And this matches up with our um, store procedure right here at first name that matches up with at first name. We have two more here. One of them is ID, which we have an at ID, it's the output one. Well, at ID, we're saying, hey, the value to start off is zero, that's the default. And then we have a, a type is an int 32. We're saying, hey, it's an, an, an integer and the direction is output. So notice we have a couple options here, output, we have input, we have input output and we have return value. So we're using the output value. And then down here, we have something similar with return value. So we have output with a return value. So notice that at output isn't specified anywhere here. There's no at output. But instead what that will be is the return value from the store procedure. Now we connect to our SQL server, we execute our store procedure, and we pass in our parameters, dynamic parameters. And then down here, we just get the values. So 
You want the ID? Well, that's P dot, which P stands for our parameter, diamet parameters right here. So diamet parameters dot get of type integer at ID. So pull it back out. And the same thing, get at output type integer. Let's run this and we'll see that if I say Joe, it returns back an ID of three and output value of one. And that's how you use your inputs and outputs um, and your return values with store procedures inside of C Sharp and SQL. All right, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.